so good evening friends now we have decided to discuss the housing pattern housing system in the in the animals and this is very important because on the basis of that we can have this idea that what kind of housing we have to make ensure and through this chapter we we will we, we discuss about the housing and housing principles so what are the housing system and what are the housing principles so first let us have a Uh, let us have a discussion on the housing principles housing is essential for maintaining health comfort and protection for getting maximum production from the livestock so this is the basic theme actually why we required the housing we required the housing to maintain health comfort production and uh, protection and getting maximum production medic maximum to keep animal into the maximum productivity status that that is why we required the housing so selection of site before we we We, we select the site. What are the basic that uh, that points those we have to keep in our mind? That topography and drainage. That it means we have to select the the, the site where water logging is not okay, in place, and what we have to avoid that situation where if we have water logging situation to avoid that that place for the for the selection of housing for the animal. Then the soil type also it's very important that the soil uh, that that we cannot use the, the fertile soil over there. but we can use all the all the soil but any kind of soil but but we have to use that uh, no not more much stone is there so we can disturb sometimes the comfort of the animal then uh, while we are selecting the site we we have to focus on the the, the proper water that uh, the connectivity if water connectivity or supply is not there then how we will manage the animal so because we we required the we know that uh, for one liter of milk production we required we required the we required We, we 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 require we required about we required about uh, about more than uh, more more than uh, five liter of water. So if water connectivity is not proper, then in that situation we we are not supposed to continue with the with the, the site. Then accessibility. It means the the place where to whom we select for the housing of the animal can be easily accessible even for the owner for 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 the. other the, the, the commercial that activity which we will operate from the farm so accessibility is of, of the farm is very important then the labor availability if cheaper labor is available on and around that area then it's 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 it's, 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 it's the place which is more suitable for the housing of the animal then the marketing that uh, of course whatever we produce in the in the farm if we have the proper market nearby then it will be very or if we have proper connectivity with the market then it's very easy for us to 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 sell out our meal corn product then the electricity yes this is also very important because nowadays we 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 are we are we are we are, we are storing our meal in bulk bulk meal cooler and uh, we 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 supply in the market as per our 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 situation when the situation is in favorable then we can supply into the market so that that kind of that facility we have to have in in our farm while we are selecting the site for the dairy farm then the ventilation this is very much important because as you know that any animals they produce a huge amount of that ammonia uh, in in the process of the rumination so proper ventilation is very much required if unnecessary that uh, the, the, the 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 close or the, the, the area where we 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 not arrange the proper ventilation facility that area is not much suitable for the for the animals and ultimately it, it affects the comfort of the animal and it creates the polluted pollution inside the shed and it can it can have the result in the, the low productivity then the thermo neutral zone there yes, of course the, the the area where we have relatively 25 to 35 degree centigrade that temperature if we are maintaining the 50 to 60% humidity if we are maintaining that situation then 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 the area will be treated as a as a, as, a, as a different and the, there are other also things that they, they are very important that uh, on the basis of the animals what what kind of that particular specification is given By, by 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 the specialist we have to follow all the things and uh, that these are the basic things so we have to keep in our mind while we are while we are this designing the cattle shed or cattle housing then the type of housing there are actually the the, the two type of housing is there generally we are following everywhere in the in the, in the backyard that uh, dairy farms we are also following the same thing single row if we have only the 15 animals then uh, single row is uh, the best way and you keep the distance 3 to 4 meter in between the animals and that 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 is more ideal in situation but if we have more than 15 animals then we have a two system that tail to tail and head to head 
these are the two system both are scientifically designed and both are having their advantage and disadvantage advantage first we will take the tail to tail system because whatever advantage we are having in tail to tail system they they become the disadvantage in the in the in the in the in the, in the head to head system so this is like that so advantage in tail to tail system simultaneously you 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 understood that all they they are the disadvantage as far as the head to head system is concerned all animals get fresh air both because both uh, animals they look in a, in a different direction so they, there is nothing like that then the spreading disease through respiratory system is minimum because both are having in a different direction so there is no chance of uh, spreading disease supervision of animals are easy 60% of time is being devoted on the hind quarters we can easily manage because in between we have we have that that a channel of that dung and urine so we can easily clean clean and uh, cleaning is comparatively easy now the disadvantage of tail to tail system that spreading of disease through digestive and reproductive system is very high because both the both both the both the both the back Uh, together we will see that there is 3 4 meter difference is there but uh, but because the, you know that uh, uh, this what main disadvantage is that uh, the uh, disease through the digestive tract is so common in that situation then the drainage channel is not exposed to sunlight because in between we have a drainage system we we are we are we are, we are removing although we are, we are keeping all the things on time but even that uh, the, 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 the the dung and the urine is there so and it was not exposed to the sunlight so that that's why the microbial population is very high in between if we have tail to tail system then the feeding of animal is of course we have to feed the animal in both the sides so of course we require the much more man hours for for feeding the animal so this is the these are the disadvantage they all become the advantage in the face to face system so supposedly we will say face to face system there is no chance of spreading disease through the digestive tract because both animals they they are looking towards each other then feeding is very easy, easy because if we have in between we have feed alley and the 3 4 meter difference is there so there is no so we can easily feed the animals and the chances of infighting is also also negligible because there is a reasonable difference distance in between the animals so and there is no chance of spreading that uh, digestible and uh, the, the, the diseases through the back portions of the reproductive tract also so all these are the benefit and uh, disadvantage of uh, both the systems so simultaneously we have discussed advantage of tail to tail system they become the disadvantage of face to face system and the disadvantage of tail to tail system they are the they become the advantage of face to face system so like that we will have discussed this thing now the the area actually the recommended area the floor space requirement for animal is given over here cow 3.5 in covered area and 7 meters square that area is required open area buffalo 4 meter because the size of it. Buffalo is little bit bigger, so and eight meters open area is required square meter. Then the young stock one meter and one point five meter up to up to the three month and then up to the three to six month we know two point five and one and uh, yes up to above six that two 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 square meter and four square meter. Then pregnant cow you know we required the same we as we required in the buffalo and and the crossbred animal, but the bull you know we. That you know that the half of herd, so it's required covered area 12 square meter and then 120 meter that is open area is required for the bull. So then and now we have a picture that you see that the it's, it's a tail to tail system in between you have the drainage facility. So you see that the chances of the that, that, that the spreading of diseases through the digestive system so common. Although it's and the labor is in both the side we have to serve the feed for the animals so much more labor is required. But only facility is that we can we can we can have milking. in between but now that is we have milking parlor parlor everywhere so this this situation is not actually the suited so that there are little bit more disadvantage as far as the tail to tail system is concerned but now we have advantage of face to face system face to face system you know that the, the animals they they, they 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 are in between they are we are feeding them how make better showing to the visitor then heads are together the cow feel easier to get into there is all sun rays shine in the gutter system so we know that uh, so there is a there is a, there, there is a reasonable reduction in the in the in the in the in the, in the gutter in the, in the in the microbial population then the feeding of cow is easier both row can be fed without back tracking it is a better for narrow bands so all these are the, the the good things about the face to face system which we have already discussed and i think i think that uh, through this we have now clarity that uh, that the, 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 the which system is more more effective and more suitable 
so accordingly we can we can, we can have that this thing that uh, we will we will arrange the animals on the, on the basis of that thing that how the the the, the, the things are very much important that uh, so we will discuss so today we have planned to discuss regarding the exotic breeds those who are available in our country and uh, i'm just sharing the screen for your further needful lecture so under this course of ruminant production and management today we have decided to discuss about the exotic cow breeds and the objectives are very clear we will learn about the characteristics of these breeds and what types of breeds and how many breeds are there those who are available in country of exotic nature so we will start with the first the picture here in front of you in the on the screen that holstein friesian this breed is very much popular and all of found in all over all our country the friesian cattle originated germany in the netherland morphological features they are large black and white dwarf animals vary from mostly black to mostly white or they can also be red and white the healthy calf weight 40 to 50 45 kg or more at birth a mature holstein cow typically weighed about 600 to 700 kg 700 kg body weight and they they are 147 That the the one there is no hump actually in, in these cattle. Friesian should be bred at 13 to 14, 15 month time age. Yes. So it means they at the first calving the age is on and around. You see that the that the 22 to 25 months. Their weight is on and around 360 kg. On that time we can we can have opportunity to bred them because they they manifest their heat heat on on that time. the breeders plan for holstein to calve for the first time in between 23 to 26 month of age the gestation period is about 9 and 1/2 month and the, the generally the body weight is 500 to 800 kg male and the female is on a 450 to 600 male production 20 28000 to 1200 12700 kg and uh, per gallon you you see that uh, this is the this is the whole production is there but the uh, the fat percentage almost on around around 3% the breed currently average 7635 liters in a year throughout 3.2 lactation the pedigree animal averaging 8125 liters per year over an area of 3.5 lactation by adding lifetime production therefore the stand at around 26 liters this is the average otherwise this breed is producing up, up about 70 liters so that the maximum that will production in a day so that kind of that that breed is the holstein friesian and nowadays we have a huge amount of this breed in our country now the second breed which observed you will see on on the in this thing that the jersey jersey is originated from the island of jersey a small british island and in the english channel of the coast of france the uh, jersey is one of the oldest dairy breeds having been reported by the authorities as being pure bred for nearly 6 centuries the coloration jersey cattle coat color ranges from light brown form to almost black some jersey may have white and then and then from diamond shape patches on their soldiers on hips or white legs and 
uh, strip on the, on the top of the soldier down from by, behind to elbow. Black jerseys almost has a tan color saddle in the middle of their black back from withers, withers to top of the line. They also have lighter coloration around their noses and eyes and on the inside of each leg. A, a lot of fawn color mature cattle have a darker face from just below their paws or just above their eyes paws. All jersey have dark eyes and dark pigmentation on the skin around their eyes and their noses. They are also have a black hooves and dark tail switch. Body and type characteristics, you can see that jersey looks to be more finer bond and body than mostly any beef breeds. Jersey are quite angular in body type because they are selected to a milk producer and not for a beef producer. They have funnel but characteristics and are quite that conical. We'll see that a triangular is there in the body. Jersey are a sm a smaller built cattle. Head characteristic. Jersey cows are very feminine, feminine looking animals. They with a finer, more feminine, feminine head. Jerseys are a naturally horned breed. Now there are genetic of pulled cattle as well. The weight of male is 540 to 820 kg, female 400 to 500, milk production 7260 kg and uh, per cycle. So we can see that uh, the in, in, in a, as compared to our country, the breeds there, they are more than three to four times they are, they are producing more milk. Milk production, Jersey cows are outstanding milk producer, producing more milk per each pound of body weight than other type of bovine. The record for milk production by one cow is held by a Jersey. The Jersey produces more milk, one less feed on other dairy breeds, eating about 80% of cholesterol normally daily intake milk yield 500 to 800 kg. Daily milk yield is found about 20 liters, whereas problem of milk fever in older cows. High fat and protein, 4 to 5 percent fat, 4 to 5 percent fat, 4 percent protein. Yellow color milk due to high fat and uh, presence of this carotene. Crossbred uh, jersey cow gives 8 to 10 liter per day. We will we'll prepare, we we'll prepare process with jersey. They, they can have the capacity to produce. 8 to 10 liter milk production. The ability to carry larger number of active milking cow per unit of area due to lower body weight, so lower maintenance required and superior gauging ability, high fertility, the ability to thrive and local produce food, adaptable to hot climate also. Jersey produces a pound of milk component at a lower cost compared to the other major breeds has little or no calving problems, greater fertility, a shorter calving interval, and earlier maturity. These are the actually the, the production traits. They are, they are very much in the favor of the breed. Now, the, 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 the third of that foreign breed is Ayrshire. Cattle are bred daily. Cattle originating from Ayrshire in southwest Scotland. They are known for their ability to convert grass into the milk efficiently and their hard, hardiness also. The breed was traditionally known as Dunlop, Dunlop cattle or Cunningham cattle. Morphological feature of Ayrshire is like that brown and white patches in almost equal amount with the some cows tending to dark mahogany color. The skin is pliable, soft fine silky hair. The bone structure is fine and fat being proportionate to body weight. You can see the picture on the screen of the Ayrshire. Now the average body size of the Ayrshire is large body weight 450 kg is the common that body weight. They are strong drug cattle weight uh, male 635 to 900 kg female 450 to 600 kg and milk production is about 7, uh, 7 to 8000 liter in a 
in a in a in a cycle so we can understood that in a lactation so we can understood it's a, it's a very good milk producing cattle now we will compare these all these three breeds together so here we have a little bit comparison that uh, that uh, the, the which one is better so here you see that the the, the uh, from fat per content point of view that the, the 4.9% uh, that fat content is there in jersey and jersey is comparatively required less attention as compared to holstein and ayrshire so here the, the same thing the body weight and everything is given over here and looking to this that we can we can say that jersey is more better uh, animal as far as in our condition because this, this animal can easily easily we can raise the animal in in our condition and without any that 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 not not that not much of that attention is required as compared to the attention required in the holstein pigeon and the ayrshire so these are few important things those we have discussed over here and i hope that uh, you will have a better understanding uh, of of this uh, the, the exotic cow and further we will discuss all the things that uh, that 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 we good evening students today we will discuss regarding the ruminant production and management under under this course we will discuss the fellow breeds the objective of discussion is that we will learn about the breeds available in our country and the characteristics of each breeds individually buffaloes thrive best in the area of moderate rainfall as they are required plenty of water for their daily bath they live on coarse or grass and even then are heavy yielders of milk buffalo species is thought to have originated in india the present day indian buffaloes are the descendants of boss arni found in northern eastern part of india especially assam and surrounding area there are two main type of buffaloes in india riverine and swamp buffalo however both are called bubulus bubalis and bubulus caravansis respectively most of the buffaloes in india are river type because generally the, on and around the river area riverine area these buffalo found swamp varieties some breeds are also found in certain part of the country especially in eastern part we we you will find the swamp buffalo buffalo is our main milk producing species we know that the 55% or, or even more than that milk in our country produced by the buffalo this is why the contribution of buffalo to the total milk production is larger than that of cattle and india is the home track of the some of the best buffalo breeds in the world so there is no opportunity to cross breeding because we in our country we are having the best breeds of the buffaloes the first one the breed which is very popular all around the world but only in our country this breed to whom we are calling the murra the breeding track of rohtak hisar jind and haryana and and nawa and patiala district in punjab the breed is characterized by massive body neck and head is long with tight calf short horns udder is well developed hips broad along with the four hind quarter drooping the color of murra is usually jet black this is the this is the characteristics and the, the one of the most prominent character the 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 the, the short that wrinkled horns this is the important characteristics of the buffalo the lactation yield is ranges in between the 1500 to 2500 kg the age of first calving is 45 to 50 months in villages but in good herds it can be reduced further 36 to 40 months but 3 years is a, a generally the, the 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 period which is which is which is little bit higher from the from the maturity of the heifers then we have a second breed to whom we are calling the bhadavari this breed is found in the bhadavari tehsil agra and etawa district of uttar pradesh and gwalior district of madhya pradesh it means these three districts uh, and then around these three districts they are they are adjoining to each other although they they are in a different state but they are adjoining and in, in these adjoining area of these districts the, the breed is uh, the bhadavari is found very much over there the body of bhadavari breed is usually light copper colored which is peculiar to its breeds with the small head 
the head of the breed is smaller as compared to other breeds wedge shaped with well placed udder and the average milk production is in between the in between on and around 1000 kg that the milk we will we expect from this breed the bullocks are reputed as the good draft animals with the heat tolerance now the, the third breed to be, which is very much popular the jafra badi because this is the breed actually which which which, which contains approximately 19 to 20% fat in the, in the milk milk although the milk production is comparatively less lower but the breed is having that that kind of potential that genetic potential they they produce on an average about the 10 20% uh, 18 to 20% that fat contained over there the breeding tag of this breed is kutch junagadh and jamnagar district of gujarat the body is long but not compact the color is usually black the head and neck are massive and udder is well developed the average milk yield is 1000 to 1200 per lactation these animals are mostly maintained by traditional breeders called maldharis those who are nomads uh, the bullocks are heavy and are used for plowing and other agricultural operations we are using the bullocks so because of that that, that that strong body they are having they possess this strong body that's why we are using these these animals as a now the the fourth breed to whom we are calling by the name of the surti its name itself gives the, the from which this belong the breed belongs to khera and baroda district of gujarat body is well shaped and medium size the color is black brown the peculiarity of breed is that there are two white collars on around of the jaw and other on brisket the bill yield ranges between on and around 1000 kg per lactation the bullocks are good for light work heritability is 0.2 to 3 percent fat is very high on 8 to 12 percent but in murra we have a 7 to 9 percent that fat percent over but here we have 8 to 12 percent fat is generally we'll find in the surti buffalo <coughs> now the fifth because we know that the seven buffalo descript breeds are available in country and the descript breeds is very much very much available in the text mehsana the breeding track of this breed is Nesana, Sabarkanta, districts of Gujarat state. This is supposed to have evolved out of cross breeding between Surti and Murra. It means this breed is actually, this was, this was assessed by the, by, by the scientists that this is the mixture of Surti and Murra. The color is usually blue or gray. Body is longer. Horns are less scarred compared to the Murra. We, have, we see that the Horns are short and they are very much carved. The milk yield is on and around 1200 to 1500 kg per lactation. The breed is supposed to have good persistence. The bullocks are good for heavy work but are rather slow, but they are a little bit lazy by nature. They have a Nagpuri breed. This breed is found in the Nagpur, Akola, Amravati of Maharashtra. This breed is also called Ichipuri or Burari. The face is long, thin, horns are long and tough. They, they look like the swords. The milk yield is 700 to 1200 kg per lactation. The age at first calving is about 40 to 50 months. An intercalving period is around 500 days, plus minus 50 days. The bullocks are for heavy trotting work, but slow in movement. In agricultural operations, various agricultural operations, we are using these. But nowadays, the, the era of using the bullocks is over. Then the seventh breed, which is Nili Ravi. The breeding track of this breed is Satlali in Ferozbri district of Punjab and the Sahiwal district of Pakistan. The head is elongated, bulging at top and depressed between eyes. The color of animal is The color of animal is usually black with white marking on forehead, face, muzzle, and legs. The milk yield is in near about 1500 to 850 kg per lactation. And there are a number of other less breeds in 
in our country just like toda nilgiri park mein odisha panpuri thoda maharashtra but they their number is very low and they are only found in the isolated pockets however the district because of their morphological traits we we have categorized the breeds now I'd like to show the pictures of these breeds so i'll i'll show you the picture of a few important breeds just wait i'm just sharing that picture of these breeds with you so now you will see that the first one that, that the murra buffalo you will see this is the murra buffalo and the the, the, the characteristics i have already uh, uh, given to you now here we have a surti buffalo you will see that the let light that brown color is there that's why we are calling it the brown buffalo or sometimes in hindi we are calling it the puri bench in the jafrawadi buffalo you will see that the, that this is the picture of jafrawadi buffalo and now this is the nagpuri buffalo so we have seen the pictures of these breeds they are very important breeds in our country and out of these seven breeds these four five breeds they, they are generally domesticated by the by the by the dairy owners but the the, the huge number of non descriptive breeds or the mixture of these breeds are also available in the country i would like to tell something about that jafrawadi buffalo in in more detail that the indian national scientific domestication center said that the jafrawadi buffalo is hybrid of african cape buffalo this is the this is the, this is the one of the most important information about that and this is high as high 18% and i and practically we will find that it's the product is 20% that fat is there in some cases Jafrawadi buffalo is also first buffalo breed of to Brazil import exported to Brazil and is also one of the four buffalo raised breed in Brazil as on 2017 the others being the Mediterranean murra and swam buffalo so these are the few information about the important breeds which we have we'll see that all these are very important breeds and we will we will have this this kind of that
so good evening student today we have selected the lecture on sheep breeds in india in this in this lecture we will discuss about the indian sheep and we will discuss their characteristics and the classification of sheep population in our country under the course of livestock production and management the objective of learning that we will learn about the classification of indian sheep herd and the characteristics of few indian sheep breeds so as far as on the basis of the climatic conditions the sheep herd was divided among four category number one the north temperate region then the northwestern arid and semi arid region and the southern peninsular region and the eastern region it means that the under four category we have a different type of sheep population and they have the different characteristics so in the north temperate region say so comparatively the cooler region and hilly area most of the hilly area is here in this in this region there are certain breeds like bakarwal then we have chankhanji then gaddi kurej karna kashmir merino and then punchi then rampur busayar these are the few breeds they, they are generally you will find in the in the north temperate area and northern part of our country then we have a north western arid and semi arid road and this in this region our state came the punjab haryana and rajasthan and the most of the part of the gujarat is also belonging to this region here we have a few breeds that 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 that, that the chokla hisar dale then jaisalmeri then jaloni khairi magra malpura marwadi muzaffarabad nali patanwadi pugal sonadi and and the munjal these are few important breeds and they 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 are generally they produces the carpet wool actually only the kashmir merino in northern uh, area where we that 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 breed the 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 wool can be used for the apparel ap apron for the apron and the for for for, for 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 producing for manufacturing the female garments whereas the in southern peninsular region we have a certain breeds like bellari coimbatore bellari they are, but they are also the the hair or or the wool can be used for the carpet wool production then dakkani it's a, it's a meat actually meat producing breed hassan kanguri madras red chennai red also we are calling it and the mandya matchri nellor nilgiri nilgiri breed is uh, the, the the this 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 particular sheep is found in the in the nilgiri hills so this breed is having a very good quality of wool and that's why the 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 animal is being domesticated for the apron wool production then ramanand white it's a meat breed then the trichy black meat breed then the bambur it's also the meat breed then we have a few breeds in eastern area of our country that belangir which is the mixed breed actually uh, the male generally we are using for the meat production and the female also uh, they, they 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 are using the people are using for the milk then the bopanda then chota nagpuri and then ganjan and get garanj and tibetan tibetan breed is also very much popular for for its carpet wool production now we will have a discussion and we will we'll discuss about the characteristics of few indian breeds <coughs> the marwadi breed which is very important this breed generally the native of the, the marwad peninsula in rajasthan sheep are hardy yielding coats or carpet variety wool of a mixed hair composition the, this sheep is characterized by long legs black face and prominent nose fleshy appendages appendages and under throat nose battles are often present tail is short and pointed the sheep are found all over the jodhpur part of jaipur district flocks are raised in pali and barmer districts the animals migrate to distant places in uttar pradesh and remote district of madhya pradesh and sometimes to the northern part of the maharashtra they possess high resistance to disease and worms and that's why this this the female of marwadi eve eve used to develop the breed to whom we are calling the hisar dale it's a cross breed developed at the at the livestock development farm hisar by crossing the rambolet mail northern part of they possesses high resistance to disease and worms 
the yield of bull is per year a 1 to 1 1 1 in between the 1 to 2 kg per animal then the gaddi breeds sheep are small in size and are found in kishtwar and badarwar tehsil of jammu a large number of inhabit the kullu valley in himachal pradesh winter and all in summer they graze the highest elevate elevations of tam in pir panjal mountains mostly in the the padar range rams are horned if hornless fleece is generally white with brown colored hair on the fleece wool is fine and lustrous average annual yield is in between the 1 1 1.5 kg per sheep clip thrice a year a part of this clip is sent to dhariwal mills and amritsar market under coat is used for the manufacturing of high quality of kullu shawls and blankets so this bead is very much utilized for 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 producing the garments then we have chennai red or madras red this distributed in chennai kachipuram vellapuram trivan trumala and districts trumala and uh, the nello district of tamil nadu it is the meat purpose breed majority are purple in color the certain animals have colored strips on the, their forehead adult male average body weight 36 kg and female is about 24 kg coimbatore it is distributed in coimbatore district of tamil nadu it is wool purpose breed medium weight animal found in white colors with black and purple colored hand seen over the regions of head and neck 30% of adult females are free from of horn adult male average body weight is 25 kg and 20 kg of female there are certain that important cross bred those who are being developed in our country the few of them they are developed in the cswri the central sheep and woolen research institute in avika nagar here in in, in rajasthan in malpura so this the they breeds they are they are named avikalin and avivastra similarly we have a hisardale breed so these are few breeds they are being developed by the crossing of the foreign 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 uh, male and uh, female and that that the avikalin out of them the strain has been evolved from the rambolet and malpura half breed based through inner breeding and selection of greasy fleece weight producing about uh, Two and half kg greasy wool having 27 micron diameter, 27 percent modulation and staple length 4.75 percent, 4.75 centimeter in half yearly clip. This breed is quite suitable because of the in in our condition uh, this breed is doing well because this is the this is the mixture of the Trambolet and Malpura halves. Then the Hisardale as we have already discussed the government livestock Hisard uh, farm through crossing of Australian Merino Tam with Bikaneri Magra used by. stabilizing the exotic animal of 75% a small short leg giving them a low set appearance leaf like medium size car most animals are cold and color is predominantly white although some brown or black patches can be also observed then we have avivastra this fine full breed evolved in csw or avika nagar through interbreeding with, with the selection of rambolet and chokla Rambolet and Chokla. So Chokla is one of the one of the best that breed which we are having in our state. And this breed is the the wool of this breed is uh, generally being used for the fine carpet for for production of fine carpet. And the the the, the female is also giving milk in in the up to certain extent. The, the the shepherds they are using the milk of this particular breed. Wool obtained two and half kg, and uh, the 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 uh, diameter of that uh, the hair is 21 to 20 micron and the the, the staple length is on and around 4.5 cm so these are the few breeds they are very important and just like that we have a kashmir merino also this breed has originated from the cross of different merino type at first the, the there are certain that uh, that, uh, that rambolet and soviet merino with predominantly migratory native sheep breed like gaddi bakarwal and punchi the level of inheritance in the cross bred animal included in kashmir merino is predominantly varied from 50 to 75% but may vary from very low almost 100% merino as the animal is are highly diversified because of a number of native breeds involved no definite uh, that description of breed is available because there there are certain that uh, there are so, so many local breeds we have used to develop this kashmir merino 
nilgiri hills or uh, of tamil nadu that nilgiri that uh, evolved evaluated during 19th century the breed has originated from cross bred and contain seven of the coimbatore tasmanian merino then the then the shewart and south down so these are the actually the, the, the various blood we have used to develop this breed medium size body color is generally white with ex- exceptions having brown patches on face and body face line is convex giving a typical roman nose ears are broad and flat droopings male have been hard buds and whiskers but the female are pulled tail is medium and thin fleece is fine and dense the the breed produces fine wool and it is on around 2 and 1/2 kg the breed is mostly maintained for manure by tea planter and other flock owners in the hilly area so these are few breeds first we have discussed the indian indian uh, indian uh, breeds and then we have discussed the breeds of the foreign 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 blood and then we have discussed the the cross blood animals those we have developed over here in our country so 